Okay, so here we're trying to show that as rho goes to a negative infinity, we're going to approach the min function. So basically what that means is that um, as rho goes to negative infinity of u of x, we want it to equal x1, assuming that x1 is less than x2. So we're going to let x1 equals x2, and we are going to write u of we're going to write u of x. Uh, we're going to sort of factor this a little bit, so we can actually pull out an x1, um, assuming that x1 does not equal zero. If x1 does equal zero, you probably do need to mention that, and uh, you could actually work through it pretty easily. So, but for all the cases where x1 doesn't equal zero we can write u of x equals this. Now, we want to take the limit of this as rho is going to uh, negative infinity. It's going to be a little tricky, so um, we're actually going to apply a transform to it, the uh, transform of the natural log. And by limit laws, we can just sort of write that limit as x1 times the limit, because x1's sort of a constant here. It's not changing as the limit changes, so we don't really worry about it right now. The limit as rho goes to negative infinity of this, which I'm just, of the natural log of that, which I'm just not going to write right now. So we can actually re rewrite that as um, x1 times the limit of uh, ln alpha 1 plus alpha 2 x2 over x1 to the row um, e, sorry hold on yeah and then that rows there because we're we applied the logarithm so we can move a row down here. Now, since we know that x1 is less than x2, we know that this is going to go to 0 as rho goes to negative infinity. Because you could apply the negative 1, you can factor out negative 1 times this going to infinity, sort of. Um, and, sorry, this is x1 which means we're going to have a fraction that is less than 1 when you flip this by applying the negative. Um, it's going to be a fraction that's less than 1 that's going to infinity, that's being raised to the infinite power. Again, not super technical, but you know this is going to infinity. So that means that this term is going to go to 0, which when we look at this, um, this is going to get really big in the negative direction and then this is just going to be some constant term. So that means that this whole limit is going to equal um, x1 times this which again is going to go to infinity or sorry this bottom is going to infinity so the whole thing is going to go to zero. We want to get rid of the ln so we raise it to e to the zero, and that's just going to equal x1. So we're good to go. Um, you may need to explain this a little bit, just explain that this is less than, this is the same as x1 over x2 going to positive infinity. And what you could do is just ignore this x1 for a while and work with this whole thing and then bring the x1 back at the end. It may be easier to just keep track of and imagine just working with this, because really you're just applying the transform to this. Um, and again, again, you can get more technical with this, because what you're doing is applying an increasing transform to this part of the function and then multiplying that by the x1 over here. So you, you need to mumble about that a little more if you're trying to be super rigorous. But at the end, we do get that this just equals x1. And obviously, if x2 were less than x1, it would be the same proof, just, you know, symmetrical. If x1 equals x2, uh, it's pretty easy. You could just combine these, and the rows will disappear pretty quickly, so it shouldn't be too hard to work with. And, yeah, you need to mention what happens when 
x1 equals 0 over here, which again isn't super hard. I think the, the harder part is doing this. 